uh, for perhaps first time the faculty of law is organizing this kind of workshop uh, for me law faculty is just like home coming because i have taught in this faculty for 5 years i was teaching political science for 5 years before radhip sir joined the topic that i have chosen is challenges of research in the era of post truth and before i proceed i am reminded of a statement by thomas shaz thomas shaz says that in the animal kingdom the rule is eat or be eaten and in the human kingdom the rule is define or be defined this is a quotation by thomas shaz and here i am also reminded of Antonio Gramsci, an Italian Marxist thinker and activist who was detained by the fascist regime there, and his prison diary is something that must be read by everybody. You know, the researchers, especially if you are in the research in humanities, you must read his prison diary. And he has developed the concept of the idea of. intellectual hegemony and domination and he says what happens in the intellectual hegemony and domination that the ruling class is not only economically dominant class it also maintains what is called a monopoly of truth it also constructs a narrative that promotes what is called intellectual hegemony and domination under which it becomes very difficult for the people on the margins or the people those who are away from the power structure to deconstruct what is being constructed and remember why the challenges of research i am going to discuss because one thing you have to understand that world around us is socially constructed the truth itself is socially constructed so the world when i say that the world around us is socially constructed who plays the most important role in constructing the truth that we have to understand who are responsible for constructing the truth and how the truth is constructed it is not only construction of truth that is most important but you will find with the advancement of science and technology especially with the it revolution what we have got we have entered into the era of post truth what a lot of facts and figures are there the facts and figures they are being shared through means of not mass communication but what noam chomsky wants to believe us that it is means of mass deception through ma means of mass deception a lot of truth that is being shared and it becomes very difficult you know for all of us to sort out what is what we call fake data fake news and what is the real news or the real data and therefore the job of the researchers become very very difficult technology has done one thing that you have got access you know just you are a push button away from all the facts and figures that are available in the world but there is also a problem that the facts and figures that are coming to you you don't know that what is the purpose of creating those kind of facts and figures and the problem is that you will find for last Many many years, there has been a lot of emphasis on empiricism, empirical research, scientific research, a lot of emphasis. आप यानी रिसर्च मेथोडोलॉजी में जो आपको पढ़ाया जाता है, आप अपनी चीजें में लिखने में बहुत खुश होते हैं कि ये तो empirical research. You know, a lot of data and data analysis, facts and figures that you are uh, going to have on the basis of that, it is you know it becomes a very good research. You know, in the research, it is the easiest. Uh, thing to do because what we are going to do we are not asking what is called normative questions we are you know the scientism and the empiricism itself is killing research and why the normative questions are very important because you have to challenge the intellectual hegemony and domination of the people those who are controlling everything nowadays and for that you have to go for the out of the box research it is not only the methodology you know the literature review hypothesis all these things are important 
where are those uncomfortable normative questions that we should raise as a people from third world country or from the developing countries why a particular kind of you know mega narrative constructed by the uh, western scholars or the uh, western sources of knowledge we are just becoming a part and we are never asking what is called what ought to be what should be as it is we are trying to explain and that's why there are scholars who are agreeing that empiricism itself becomes a cause piracy why because you are not going to question the established truth the constructed truth and because of that what happens that you just become the part of a particular system that is trying to perpetuate what is called intellectual hege intellectual hegemony and domination and this is the reason that you know responsibility on the students of social sciences law humanity you know that that is there on the shoulder of the you know the responsibility that you have on your shoulder that you have to understand and you know one statement with copyright i will say that the, our planet or the major powers like india united states of america china they will not be destroyed by the weapons of mass destruction they will be destroyed by the ideas of mass destruction and the ideas of mass destruction are being created they are being constructed and that is leading to what is called global rise of a particular kind of ideology which is full of hatred xenophobia islamophobia racism ethnic nationalism all these are the result of those ideas of mass destruction you know what is the challenge before us for a researcher for example if you are going aapne jaise koi topic select kiya और अपने सुपरवाइजर के पास जब आप लेके जाते हैं तो उसमें कहते हैं सोर्स ऑफ डेटा का हो, क्या होगा मटेरियल कहाँ से आप कलेक्ट करेंगे लिटरेचर इसमें क्या अवेलेबल है ये रिसर्च है ना री एंड सर्च तो इसमें क्या मटेरियल अवेलेबल है सबसे पहले ही कहा जाता है इट मींस कुछ इनोवेशन करने की बहुत गुंजाइश कम रह जाती है ऐसे हालात में जब आपको एक ट्रेडिशनल सेट है जिसपे आपको काम करना है और उसी के हिसाब से आपको चीज़ें प्रोड्यूस करनी है अल्टीमेटली जब आपने लिटरेचर रिव्यू किया एंड यू नो दिस इज बेस्ड ऑन माय ओन एक्सपीरियंस यू नो योर कॉग्नेटिव ओरिएंटेशन इज आल्सो वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉग्नेटिव ओरिएंटेशन दैट इज आल्सो डिटरमिंड बाय द कंस्ट्रक्टेड ट्रूथ योर ओन सराउंडिंग्स यू नो हाउ द पीपल हैव परसीव्ड थिंग्स एंड हाउ दैट हैज बीन ट्रांसमिटेड टू यू थ्रू वेरियस सोर्सेस बेसिकली व्हाट हैपेंस फॉर एग्जांपल आई वाज डूइंग अ रिसर्च ऑन द फिनोमेनन ऑफ टेररिज्म आई वाज राइटिंग अ बुक ऑन टेररिज्म at that time i went for material you know the literature review and this is very important for all of you to understand you know what happens when you are going for data collection and all basically when i was going for the literature review and when i found that there is a plethora of literature available on tags a lot of books in all the libraries wherever you go aap internet pe ja ke click kijiye also it bahut trash bhi hota hai not very serious writing journalistic writings uh blame game and all now you have to do a research on terrorism so the first of all the first thing that i encountered what terrorism is main aap se baar baar keh raha hu era of post truth mein hum reh rahe hain this is very very difficult you know the first question is what terrorism is how you define terrorism and you'll be shocked to know that there is nothing like a universally accepted definition of terrorism even united nation doesn't have a universally accepted definition of terrorism neither interpol has you know a universally accepted definition of terrorism when you don't have a definition of terrorism what will happen that the people are trying to define terrorism according to their own experiences and you will find two kinds of definition one definition that has been developed by the governments of the various countries according to their own experiences it means the state apparatus itself determines what terrorism is and then you have a you know academicians scholars who have also tried to define many many definitions of terrorism you will find and when you try to understand the definition you will find paradoxical contradictory many many things that they have included and the most important aspect that you will find is the most of the definitions almost 90% of the definition they are actor centric not the act you know they are not defined on the basis of act who is doing is more important what is being done is not very very important 
so ultimately what happens that a particular kind of crime which may fall into the category of terrorism that is not described as terrorism and the same kind of pattern if that is involved and some other people are doing the same thing that will be described as terrorism this definition of terrorism if this is not available it is not by accident keep in mind it is by design the national governments never want that there should be a universally accepted objective scientific definition of terrorism because if you have you have a very clear cut objective definition of terrorism what will happen most of the states in the world they will fall into the category of terrorist state and this is the reason they don't want to define terrorism and what happens then one man terrorist becomes another man's hero another man's terrorist becomes you know other man's hero. This, this, this is happening this dilemma is deliberate it is not you know we are running short of words and keep in mind in social sciences the humanities may you find there is nothing like uh, universal acceptability for any kind of definition but for terrorism it is needed because it also needs action action by the state act you know counter terrorism strategies by the organization like united nations so that's why there must be an objective definition of terrorism the second very very important aspect that and this is the point of data collection when i was trying to collect data i found that there is a very very good study and that has been conducted on phenomena of terrorism from what we call 2 uh, 1901 to 2020 so saal ki puri study ki gayi aur wo bahut hi authentic book hai united nations ne usko fund kiya and bisoni ki book hai usme ye paya gaya ke in 100 years you will find that how many people have died in the acts of terrorism it is 70 million plus 1 lakh aap likh denge usko 70 million 1 lakh i am saying 70 million plus 1 lakh do alag alag cheeze hain why because when there is no, nothing like a universally accepted definition of terrorism there are two kinds of definition of terrorism one is you know there are two kinds of terrorism one is a state terrorism and the another is non state terrorism you have to very much clear about it that the state also commits the acts of terrorism and there are also terrorist organization who are carrying the act of terrorism so what happens that the study you know that reveals that in 100 years from 1901 to 2020 70 million people died in state terrorism 70 million people died in state terrorism and 1 lakh people died in non state terrorism now what is the job of a researcher the moment you go to search the letter you will find that 95% almost literature on terrorism will be focusing on the terrorism that is killing one lakh people and only 5% literature will be there that will be you know is studying or trying to find out what is the reason for this state terrorism in the world this is the problem now if you are going for research agar aapne ye data bata diya ki sir terrorism is a global threat why because 70 million 1 lakh people have been killed in terrorism it's a half truth and half truth is a whole lie aapne half truth kaha aur researcher cannot do this cannot afford to do this main bar bar aap se keh raha hu ke the nations or the countries or even our planet will be destroyed by the ideas of mass destruction not by the ideas of weapon weapons of mass destruction now on the basis of this what has happened that you will find a particular kind of counter terror terror strategy has been adopted in which states are involved united nations is also involved but you will find there are scholars there are thinkers organic intellectuals who are trying to deconstruct the you know the reality of terrorism and they are coming to the point that it is a state terrorism which is more dangerous and that is why we should focus on state terrorism because max weber kehta hai na state goes for organized violence a state has monopoly over the means of violence a state uses what is called legitimized violence you know the element of legitimacy that is attached to the state is also a very very dangerous phenomenon in these kind of circumstances what happens that the challenge before a researcher you can understand in humanities these challenges are not there in sciences these challenges are challenges are there for us the another very important aspect you see that we are living in an era when the mega narratives all the mega narrative almost except liberalism capitalism they have declined they have disappeared earlier you see when we try to analyze any kind of social political phenomenon legal phenomenon even we used to 
in a light either in the light of liberalism capitalism or in the light of marxism socialism but after 1991 you will find there is demise of marxism socialism it is no more there it is not something that you know that is going to help you in uh, uh, finding out uh, very various things the tools and methods that we used to adopt and this was the time when uh, francis fukuyama came with the idea of the end of history and the last man aap log naam suna hoga kitab ka jin researchers ne nahi padha unko zarur padhna chahiye agar aap log is level pe kaam kar rahe hain to for everybody he came with the idea of the end of history and the last man and what did he say he said that the ideological evolution of man is complete with completed with the triumphant capitalism and liberalism in the world so he says that the ideological journey of man was started from very beginning and final culmination of the ideological evolution of man is liberalism capitalism western liberal democracy and all other rival ideologies fascism socialism marxism they all have disappeared that shows that because of its merit only liberalism capitalism is surviving because of its merit only and this is the reason that all the people they should believe in what is called universalization of democracy universalization of capitalism and the project of globalization is before you globalization is nothing but universalization of capitalism through liberalization and privatization so that project is there globalization of you know globalization is also leading to what is called homogenization it is also destroying indigenous cultures it is also destroying you know a, a mono cultural world is under construction so that is that is a very very dangerous sign languages are dying you know different cultures are dying different dialects are uh, uh, dying every day you will get this kind of news uh, so a mono cultural world is being constructed now you don't have that luxury of having those kind of uh, you know jisko kehte the binaries you have to now you have to come forward with something that either you have to accept that ideological evolution of man is over and what is whatever is being suggested or offered by the you know the dominant powers on earth who are controlling resources well power honor and everything all the international institutions you know the trinity especially that you should remember the trinity that is international monetary fund that is world bank and world trade organizations now why normative questions becomes difficult you know and why should we ask normative questions for example a world that has been constructed after the world war second and whatever we see today and in this world it is very very difficult for developing countries to survive forget about prosper and progress for example in the wto you see how the voting is made in all this jisko uh, trinity kehte hain usme voting kis tarah se hoti hai if three four major powers of the world economically dominant powers of the world they come together and if they try to frustrate the legitimate aspiration of the 50 poor nations of the world they can do it by ganging up because their voting power will be higher than the voting power of the 50 african and asian nations combined this is the position so whenever you are going for your patent right you are fighting for you are going for basmati you are going for tulsi you are going for neem and you are going to wto it becomes problematic for you to win again for example you know many countries are following protectionism but there are many many charges that are leveled against these countries merely empiricism is enough you know hum empirical research agar karte rahe data collect kare primary data secondary data aur uski buniyad ko usko analyze kare is statistical method adopt karke you have to work very hard when you are trying to conceive the idea of a research with this broader understanding of the surroundings your own surroundings you jisko kehte hain hypothesis ka level jo hota hai jo aap presume karte hain kisi fact ya reality ko assume karte hain kisi cheez ko ki ye fact ya reality hai dekhiye research ki sabse badi jo asset kya hota hai doubt aapka jo sabse bada jo asset hai for a researcher it is doubt you cannot accept everything you know with eyes shut and mind closed no aapko doubt hoga nahi ye baat kahi ja rahi hai इसमें फैक्ट है या नहीं एंड आई हैव टू एनालाइज यही से तो रिसर्च शुरू होती है मिसाल के तौर पे आई ऑलवेज टॉक अबाउट आइडिया द मास डिस्ट्रक्शन इन योर कंट्री देयर देयर इज अ नीड फॉर डी कंस्ट्रक्टिंग और डेमोलिशिंग मेनी मेनी मिथ्स एंड स्टेरियोटाइप्स दैट आर बीइंग क्रिएटेड 
Myths of population explosion attached to a particular community. Myths of polygamy attached to a particular community. But you know, at the hypothesis level itself, when you are going, you have to find where, what is the utility of your research. And here comes the role of funding agencies. For example, I want to work on किसी भी इशू पे टेररिज्म पे मुझे काम करना है मैं फंडिंग एजेंसी के पास जाऊंगा आइदर वो गवर्नमेंट की कोई एजेंसी होगी या कोई प्राइवेट एजेंसी होगी जो कॉर्पोरेट जिनके पीछे फंड कर रहे होंगे कॉर्पोरेट्स आप समझते हैं कि अगर मैं उनसे जाऊं और मेरी रिसर्च की हाइपोथेसिस में ये बात क्लियर हो कि आई वांट टू नो द इफेक्ट्स ऑफ जेनेटिकली मॉडिफाइड सीड्स एंड फूड्स ऑन द पीपल कॉर्पोरेट एजेंसी और मैंने अप्रोच किया और मैंने उसको अप्लाई किया आप यू नो हु इज गोइंग टू फाइंड यू आपको ये जानना होगा यू हैव बी वेरी स्मार्ट आपने अप्लाई कर दिया बहुत अच्छा प्रपोजल लिखा लेकिन जो फंडिंग एजेंसी है उसके बैक में कोई कॉर्पोरेट ऐसा हाउस खड़ा हुआ है जिसका पूरा काम ही है जेनेटिकली मॉडिफाइड सीड में विच इज लीडिंग टू यू नो मास सोसाइड ऑफ फार्मर्स इन आर कंट्री आप सब जानते हैं उस फैक्ट को देखिए वाई दिस इज नीडेड आप सिंपली समझ लीजिए टेक्निकली तो बहुत चीजें बोली जा सकती है बट सिंपली समझ लीजिए वाई डी कंस्ट्रक्शन इज नीडेड एंड वाई इट बिकम वेरी डिफिकल्ट इन द एरा पोस्ट जब आपके सामने ये चीजें रखी जाती हैं मिसाल के तौर पर द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ जेनेटिकली मोडिफाइड सीड इन सीड इन इंडिया 97 से लेकर के 2010 तक के बीच में इट इज सेड दैट फाइव लैक फार्मर्स हैव कमिटेड सुसाइड इन इंडिया और जो नोन हिस्ट्री है वर्ल्ड की उसमें सबसे बड़ा मास सुसाइड नहीं है इतना बड़ा मास सुसाइड ऑफ फार्मर्स कहीं नहीं हुआ है Why this is happening? आप जानते हैं कि लैंड होल्डिंग हमारे यहाँ कैसे होती है एबोलेशन और जमींदारी के बावजूद बिग लैंड लॉर्ड्स होते हैं किसी आदमी के पास मान लिया कि दो बीघे जमीन है और किसी आदमी के पास मान लिया कि सौ बीघे जमीन है पूरी फैमिली में लाकर के सौ बीघे जमीन है जहाँ पे डेली वेज अर्नर काम करते हैं और उनको वो पैसे देते हैं वो दे आर डिपेंडेंट अपॉन हिम और उसके पास इतने पैसे हैं कि वो कोई मल्टी नेशनल ब्रांड की वो खरीद सकता है जेनेटिकली मॉडिफाइड सीड जिससे प्रोडक्शन जो होता है मल्टीप्लाई हो जाता है आपने देसी सीड इस्तेमाल किया तो प्रोडक्शन जो होगा आप मान लिया पाँच टन होगा तो उससे हो सकता है पच्चीस टन हो जाए अब जब प्रोडक्शन का मामला ये आएगा कि आपने अगर खेत आपका ऐसे है एक बीघे का और तीन चार जगह पर बैठा हुआ है और उसके आस सब जगह अगर जेनेटिकली मॉडिफाइड सीड से खेती हो रही है तो सबसे पहली बात होगी कि उसे ज़्यादा पानी की जरूरत होगी जमीन से सारा पानी वो ले लेगा उसको पानी की ज्यादा जरूरत होगी आपकी फसल जो देसी सीड की होगी वो सूख जाएगी जेनेटिकली मॉडिफाइड सीड के साथ दूसरी प्रॉब्लम क्या है कि उसी के साथ साथ ये भी होगा कि फर्टिलाइजर भी आपको उन्हीं से लेना होगा पूरा पैकेज है कोई और देसी खाद आपने इस्तेमाल किया फसल नहीं होगी तो आपने अगर एक चीज खरीदी तो दूसरी चीज खरीदी फर्टिलाइजर इरीगेशन की बहुत अच्छी फैसिलिटी आपके पास होनी चाहिए पानी की बहुत ज्यादा जरूरत होगी उस प्रोडक्शन में जो आपके जमीन के लिहाज से नहीं होगी दूसरे की प्रोडक्टिविटी उससे अफेक्ट होगी आपने अपने यहाँ लगाया और अगर आपने पेस्टिसाइड्स वही अगर इस्तेमाल कर लिए जो वहाँ पे होते हैं तो अल्टीमेटली दूसरी फसल पे जो देसी सीड की है उस पर बर्बादी होगी एंड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट प्रॉब्लम दैट इज टू बी क्वेश्चन बाई ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ लॉ वट इज पेटेंट लॉ एंड इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी राइट ये सारी चीज़ें जो हमारे पास हैं दैट सीड वेन यू आर गोइंग टू बाय जिसको कहते हैं जेनेटिकली मॉडिफाइड सीड इट इज सो यू नो डिजाइन दैट इज यूज इट्स वट इज कॉल्ड रिप्रोडक्टिव कैपेसिटी यानी कि ये 